Hello everyone. Well, welcome once again to, uh, back to my videos here. Um, right, we're having a look at the Tyro or the Ishin Tyro 109. Okay, I've got the, uh, it's all virtually all the stock uh, with the exception of the Runcam Swift camera. So it's all bound up. Uh, I'll put my Viper FX goggles on and we should hopefully be ready to go. I'm also recording it on the uh, Ishin RD200 goggles. Uh, so let's find my transmitter and we'll plug that in. find that here we go and right, we'll press record on there Eight minutes. okay that's now recording I'm not gonna do anything fancy with this uh, this is just a little test flight so uh, hopefully I can take it up and land it uh, all in the same flight so uh, here we go
Well, there we have it. <laughs> I, ne I nearly got it. I nearly had it on the landing mat, as such as it is. Let's just take the transmitter off. And we'll have another little look at this. Right, let's turn that off. Okay. Right, so that, I think, well, for me, that was a successful flight. Uh, successful in the fact that uh, it actually came down in one piece. Let me stop recording on there and on the Ishin goggles, uh, Ishin watch. So that's all. There we go. Yep, that's all turned off. Okay, right. So, what do I think of the Tyro or the Ishin Tyro 99? Um, yes. Like me, if you're not that very good at uh, quad flying, then, and you would like to know how they work and how it all goes together and what makes them fly, etc., etc. Um, yeah, go and watch some videos. Uh, you soon pick up your own little tricks and tips on what to use and how to do it. Um, one thing I've used, uh, part, a good thing from watching other people's videos before you go out and buy something is you can effectively learn from other people's testing other people's mistakes even and and put those into practice so you don't really have some of the frustrations that occur when you have a newly released model so um, one of those examples is right here is the Runcam Swift camera Fairly cheap as chips, but an ideal replacement for the camera that comes with it. The field of view is just so much wider, it's so much better. The the standard props that come with it, and I think you get about three or four sets of translucent, garish green props, two blades, which I'm sure would be okay for this. I'm sure it's been it would be absolutely fine. I've chosen to go with these three blade props, which I've got a multitude of down the shed. So I've decided to use this. And uh, yeah, so far, quite good. Yeah, very, very good. Um, what are the other things that I've done to this model? Um, I've put on a little bit of heat, heat shrink uh, because I found straight out of the box this was very very loose even though you tighten this down so there's a, a bit of play between the hex nut section there and the actual stalk of the aerial so and um, i found that i found it found that just tightens up a little bit more it probably reduce any interference if it produces any at all i don't know but i just thought it was worthwhile doing it uh what battery am i running here uh, I can't quite remember, but I will get it out and I will tell you. Okay, so it's a Tattoo 5050 75C rated free cell. So, uh, yep, yeah, uh, that's probably good for another uh, couple more minutes, I would have thought. So I'm, I probably could have stayed up there another few minutes and um, it wouldn't have hurt the battery at all. But it was just a test flight. Um, I'm quite happy with it. I've got the Ishin 129 coming very shortly. In actual fact, I've been expecting that one for... must be overdue by about a week and a half now, so it must be due shortly. Uh, what else have I got to say about this model? Um, not a great deal, other than if you want to learn how a quadcopter works and, you know, you're quite fed up with these... Uh, fly out of the box things then this is a very good and uh, a good example of a kit built one you can go and build yourself just be aware that some components on some models are probably are probably not quality checked as much as they should be if i can put it that way so the example I can give there is my Ishin 79, my original one. I think it's gone through two, 
two ESCs and a flight controller and that's before it even flew and that was after me using a smoke stopper <laughs> so would you believe so um, yeah you, uh, if you want to build yourself a flight stopper and I recommend you do there are plenty you can either go out and buy one XT30 or XT60 or even XT90 configuration um, but they're easy enough to build if you're if you're into soldering and you don't mind doing a bit of soldering there are plenty of plans or diagrams on YouTube um, and the internet for you to do that so that's another cheap way of you doing it not that they're that expensive anyway so right okay I've got some videos for the Ishin 79 the one that did fly quite well and the Ishin Tyro 109 uh, from the RD200 Ishin watch and the Viper FX goggles which I'll post up on this video and um, put it into a compilation at, at the end so once again thanks for watching it's a bitterly cold day now uh, we've got a bit of sun coming through um, but it is clouding over uh, quite a bit uh, I'll just uh, I'll just show you here and you can't you might be able to hear it but the wind is starting to be ooh, quite bitter so uh, right that is it for the time being um, this is the Ishin Tyro 109 which I'm going to like that's a nice flying quad and I recommend you get that one until the next video thank you for watching and we'll see you again soon bye